So our scripture reading this morning is going to be from Matthew, uh, chapter 16, verses 13 to 20. So that's Matthew chapter 13, verse, I'm sorry, chapter 16, verses 13 to 20. When Jesus came to the region of Caesarea Philippi, he asked his disciples, Who do people say the Son of Man is? They replied, Some say John the Baptist, others say Elijah, and still others Jeremiah or one of the prophets. But what about you? he asked. Who do you say I am? Simon Peter answered, You are the Messiah, the Son of the living God. Jesus replied, Blessed are you, Simon, son of Jonah, for this was not revealed to you by flesh and blood, but by the Father in heaven. And I tell you that you are Peter, and on this rock I will build my church, and the gates of Hades will not overcome it. I will give you the keys to the kingdom of heaven. Whatever you bind on earth will be bound in heaven, and whatever you loose on earth will be loosed in heaven. Then he ordered his disciples not to tell anyone that he was the Messiah. This is the word of God for the people of God. God. As we look at our scripture for today, it's necessary for us to make sure that we fully understand what Jesus is saying to Peter. While Jesus tells Peter that he is the rock of the church, that he is the rock that the church will be built upon, he is not the foundation of the church. The foundation is and will always be Jesus. So Peter will be the first rock placed on the foundation of Jesus. And I know that most of us are not interested in Greek translations, and I hope that you'll allow me just a, a short little explanation here. And the word, uh, the word that Jesus uses in the Greek when he says, you are Peter, is actually, you are Petras, which actually means a small rock. So Peter is to be the first, that first small rock that is going to be placed upon the foundation of Jesus. And thus, thus ends your Greek lesson for the day. So, Peter's an interesting choice for Jesus to choose to be that first rock of the church. Peter has shown that he is a great, has a great zeal for the gospel of Jesus. And you can see this in his preaching, and you can see this on the day of Pentecost. However, Peter is also a person that I think we could easily describe as a loose cannon. When Jesus calls the apostles out of the boat while walking on the water, it is Peter who is willing to step out. However, we see that Peter quickly begins to sink when his faith turns to doubt. And as Jesus helps to pull him from the water, he tells him those familiar words, O ye of little faith. And when Jesus is about to be arrested, Peter draws his sword and cuts the ear off of one of the servants of the priest that was there to arrest Jesus. What could he possibly be thinking? In the entire time that he had known and followed Jesus, how could he have thought that acting out in such a violent manner would have been what Jesus wanted him to do? And Jesus reacts in John chapter 18, verse 11, saying this, Peter, put away your sword. Shall I not drink the cup the Father has given me? So again, Peter is admonished for his actions. You see, Peter was a man that was quick to act, but not always quick to think. And before he is crucified, Jesus tells Peter, you're going to deny me three times. And of course, Peter says, oh, there's no way, Lord, I'd never do that. I would never deny you. But we know that before Jesus is done being crucified, Peter does indeed deny knowing him three times. See, he was afraid for himself and wasn't going to let a little thing like being that first rock of the church stop him from continuing to live. Now, in the end, Jesus forgives Peter and he goes on to do great things. And ultimately, Peter is crucified and not only crucified, but cruci crucified upside down because he felt he was not worthy to be crucified in the same way that Jesus Christ was. But I think it's interesting for us to take from all of this, is this. It doesn't matter what you've done, and it doesn't matter how you're going to mess up. 
And it doesn't matter how many times you have failed. Jesus Christ can still use you. I was talking to Todd this morning, and one of the things we're going to try to start introducing once we get back inside is kind of using little video clips here and there to illustrate our points. And I had two lovely ones that would have worked today, but since we're outside, I'm just going to have to try to give you a, a visual in describing them. So one of the videos that I would have shown today, and we actually watched it a while back in the church, um, is one that addressed some ideas that people from outside the church think about people inside the church. And in the video, it would say something like this, uh, only weak people believe in God. And then it had two big burly guys there and they respond, do you want to say that again? You might remember this one. But my favorite part of the video was this. There's a person from outside the church and they say, why would I ever go to church? Churches are full of hypocrites. And then the person from the church says this, yes, and there is always room for one more. And I know that none of us like to think of ourselves as hypocrites. But if we are truly honest with ourselves, there are times in our lives when we have fallen short of what God, we know God wants from us. And I'll be the first person to admit this to you, and this may come as a huge shock, but I am not a perfect person. And I'll fully admit to you that there are people in my past that if they knew that I had become a pastor, would say something to the effect of, there's no way they would let him do that. But you see, that doesn't matter. It doesn't matter because I know that I'm not perfect, but I do know that I'm forgiven. The same is true for every person here today and every person out there who may hear this sermon. It doesn't matter what you've done in your past. Jesus Christ has already paid the cost for your sins, and through him you can have forgiveness and you can have salvation. You probably know this about me, but in case you don't, I have to tell you that I'm a sucker for a good turn of phrase or a good old folksy saying. And so one of my favorites from growing up in Oklahoma is this phrase that is said when it's hot outside. And I'm going to do my best to refer back to my old accent. It's hotter than two bull weevils in a sweat sock. To say that for you again, it's hotter than two bull weevils in a sweat sock, which basically means it's hot outside. From my time in Pennsylvania at Mifflin County, I learned that when people are coming over for a uh, company, you need to get you need to red up the room. And from my time in uh, some area, area, I've learned that something is Mayan instead of just being mine. So in my studying this week, I came across a saying in an article that was written by Rochelle Samsel, and I thought that it was the perfect embodiment of what we're trying to talk about today. Even a broken crayon still colors. And so indeed in our household, when a crayon is broken, we don't get angry and we don't throw it out. We say, well, now we have two crayons of that color. And what a great way to think about ourselves. We know that we are broken people living in a broken world. We know that each one of us carries our own scars from life. But through the love of Jesus Christ, we can still color this world. And God doesn't throw us away or stop using us because we're broken. If anything, we are more valuable to him because he can use our brokenness. You need to know that no matter what your background is or how many mistakes you've made in this life, God can and still will use you for his purposes if you're willing to let him do so. The second part of the scripture today that I think is especially important for us to remember uh, comes from the ending of Ace, uh, verse 18. And I tell you that you are Peter, and this is what we're looking at, and this is the rock I built my church, sorry, this is what we're looking at here, and the gates of Hades will not overcome it. In a period of time when many of us are full of dread and worry in this world, I plead with you to take comfort in those words. The idea that nothing will overcome the church. And we need to remember that the all-important idea about that church is the church is not that building. It's not that building there. It's not this pavilion. The church is the people. Remembering to the lyrics of this song that I bet some of you are probably singing in your heads right now, I am the church, you are the church. We are the church together. 
all who follow Jesus all around the world, yes, we're the church together. And no, I'm not going to sing it for you. So what that means for us is this. We, are all, we as a people will not be overcome by any force, outside or from within, as long as we continue to follow and build upon Jesus Christ the foundation and Peter the first rock. As you can imagine in our household, uh, the movies that we watch are generally animated in children's movies. And there is one that I would have had another clip from today to show you. Uh, if you haven't seen it, I do recommend it. The movie Moana. Uh, it's about Pacific Islanders and some of their history. But in the movie, Moana uh, is the daughter of the chief of the island. And on that island, there's a mountain. And on top of that mountain, each chief has placed another rock as they've taken over the tribe so that it continues to grow. And so at one point, it would be Moana's turn to put a rock on there. But I think that's how we have to think of ourselves as well. We continue on with the work, adding our own rock each time we do something for the Lord. And we continue building upon the legacy of those that have come before us. And the good news is that we've already, and we've already talked about it, Peter was an imperfect person. And Jesus still chose him to be that first rock. And we are imperfect people, and Jesus still chooses us to continue and add our rocks to, that church, to the church as well. So my challenge is for you this week, first, Remember to give thanks to God, to give him thanks for his mercy. Remember to thank him for not throwing us away when we are broken. Thank him for helping us to see and to know that our brokenness does not stop us from being valuable to him. And secondly, take time to think about it this week. How can you continue to add your rock to the church? Is there a ministry that you want to get involved in? Is there something that you've wanted to do in the church or in the world that you feel Jesus has called you to. What can you do to explore these ideas further? Amen.